Hi, everybody. Hello. Welcome to Corin Talks. I'm Reverend Rosie, and this is... Pastor Dan. Hi. Hi. We're grateful that you are with us this morning. So um, we're going to start off by um, praying together. So let's pray. Gracious God, we thank you for the opportunity to be gathered together as a community through technology. We pray that you would be present with us and with our world, that you would be with those that are sick, um, both with the coronavirus and other illnesses that will arise in their time. Lord, we ask that you would bless the caretakers and those that are essential workers, that they would be um, safe and comforted as they um, are out in the world doing your work. And we pray for those that are at home, that you would send your peace and your comfort to surround them and fill them with light and joy in the time in which they are um, at rest. And so we ask that you would ease our hearts and our minds and open us up to your word in our conversation today. We pray this in your holy name. Amen. Amen. Our text today is from the prophet Ezekiel, chapter 37, verses 1 through 14. Listen for the word of the Lord. The hand of the Lord came upon me, and he brought me out by the Spirit of the Lord and set me down in the middle of a valley. It was full of bones. He led me all around them. There were very many lying in the valley, and they were very dry. He said to me, Mortal, can these bones live? I answered, O oh Lord God, you know. Then he said to me, Prophesy to these bones and say to them, O oh dry bones, hear the word of the Lord. Thus says the Lord God to these bones, I will cause breath to enter you, and you shall live. I will lay sinews on you and will cause flesh to come upon you and cover you with skin and put breath in you and you shall live and you shall know that I am the Lord. So I prophesied as I'd been commanded and as I prophesied, suddenly there was a noise, a rattling and the bones came together, bone to its bone. I looked and there were sinews on them and flesh had come upon them and skin had covered them, but there was no breath in them. Then he said to me, Prophesy to the breath, prophesy, mortal, and say to the breath, Thus says the Lord God, Come from the four winds, O breath, and breathe upon these slain that they may live. I prophesied as he commanded me, and the breath came into them, and they lived, and stood on their feet, a vast multitude. Then he said to me, Mortal, these bones are the whole house of Israel. They say, Our bones are dried up, and our hope is lost. We are cut off completely. Therefore prophesy and say to them, Thus says the Lord God, I am going to open your graves and bring you up from your graves, O my people. I will bring you back to the land of Israel, and you shall know that I am the Lord when I open your graves and bring you up from your graves, O my people. I will put my spirit within you, and you shall live, and I will place you in your own soil. Then you shall know that I, the Lord, have spoken and will act, says the Lord. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Them dry bones. I love this passage. <laughs> we'll take it away then. Well, um, I just I love this passage partly because it's one of the most beautiful like images in in scripture. I think it's really easy for people to um, visualize mm. the art um, around this passage is remarkable. Mm -hmm. um, you know, when they, a few years ago, when they did the, the St. James, St. James Bible, where they re, re illuminated, they were doing illumination of um, scripture and it was done with the NRSV and it was all, uh, it was like the first modern one. They, um, the one involving this passage um, is done with scene, scenes from the Holocaust. Mm. Um, that's the dry bones that they used. And um, that really sticks with me, but yeah, I think just the imagery is really beautiful mm -hmm. here, but it's also, um, it's just really powerful, kind of a powerful text about how God comes to us, even when we're in the weakest parts of our, of our lives. Like when we think there's nothing left, mm -hmm. um, God says that that's not the final word. It's a very formative text as well. The word Catholic actually means four winds. 
And so, in, so not only Roman Catholic, but the Holy Catholic, the, that's what we're talking about when we talk about a Catholic church, uh, the breath coming from all over the world to reignite mm -hmm. uh, the dead bones. So this is a very formative text in just in church life, and it's something we often forget about. I also love preaching Ezekiel, and I also re I read this passage, and I just want, you know, that's how we refer to everyone from now on, mortals. Mortals. Mortal. Go we, do the word of the Lord. We talked about it. It's gender neutral. Let's do it. It's fantastic. We're going we're gonna to claim mortals. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so dig into this uh, in the moment. What does this make you think in our particular context today? So I think... Um, you know, I, I think for me, the part that's really powerful is actually the, fir the first, I, I mean, the, God bringing them to life is, um, is the Pope, right? But for me, I think the part that's really powerful in like today is, the, in, and in Lent, but, but in this whole craziness that's happening in our world, I just think about like, what are the dry bones in our lives right now? Like, what are the things that are making us feel like God's not going to do anything? And so is it this, this coronavirus? Is it um, being trapped in our houses and having severe depression? Is it being um, concerned about the future or a loved one's health? Like what, I think finding and naming what the dry bones in your life are um, in this moment. You know, they don't have to be forever, but like right now, what is it that I feel like is dead? Mm -hmm. Like, is my hope dead? And it, cause these are like dead, dead things. These bones are in a desert. They have been laying there. The implication in the text is that there's like no marrow left, they're sun bleached. They've kind of scattered there. There's, you know, which, which bone goes to which body. It's mm -hmm. like it, um, as dead as it can it be, cannot like the, be more dead than this. And other it, than the bones actually having turned to dust. Like right. this is about as dead as it right. gets. Right. And so what is there for you right now? And like it, and, and I just, I keep thinking about people's mental health, but even my own mental health, like what, right. You know, like what's, what is breaking me to the point that I don't have hope or what is, what is so, so hard to believe that God's going to intervene in and then take that, like, let's, let's name what that is and what needs to have the Ruach brought back into it, you know? And so that's kind of where I start with this text. What do you... I, I often go to Ezekiel himself. I, I love Ezekiel. Uh, just before we started this, I saw an old Facebook post came up in which I said, when in doubt, preach Ezekiel, because it's always good to remind people that as pastors go, you're relatively sane. And uh, Ezekiel, he's so crazy and he's so out there in his interactions with God. The, the whole book is in the first person like this, and it's him having these conversations with the Lord. And I love the opening, you know, God brought me into this desert full of dry bones and said to me, you know, mortal, can these bones live? And the answer seems obvious. Like the, these are thoroughly dead bones, but Ezekiel isn't going to tell God what God right. can't do. And so it says, Lord, you know, right. which is the best way of saying God knows that I've ever heard. Right. And literally God, mm -hmm. but in, in the second person. And so here, here's Ezekiel just dealing with the Lord and is given these commands, you know, prophesy, to the bones and, and he does and everything that he talked about happens it's the creation the creation of humanity all over again mm -hmm. um or, or around around these dry bones they're gathered together the sinews go on the meat it's a great way to put it goes on the skin covers it but there's no breath you know the the whole the whole thing didn't happen at once god said here's all the things that are going to happen ezekiel prophesies just as he was told to but the breath doesn't come back right away. And then right. God says, prophesy to the breath. And that's just, when... Just like with Adam and Eve, right? It, exactly. Yeah. Like there's multiple steps, multiple goes. It's not always one step. It's not easy. And so seeing Ezekiel following that calling, despite, I mean, no one wants to be called to preach to dry bones. I mean, go, go out there and prophesy to the bones. Like... Okay. And I imagine there's some pastors who kind of feel, well, in, in this sort of setup, 
Um, right. You all have been great about giving us some interaction and back and forth, telling us what you think about these. But there's a whole lot of pastors who feel like they're preaching to an empty void right now. Mm -hmm. And being reminded, even, even, if I, even if I took you to a desert valley and put you in a valley of dry bones, if I tell you to preach to him, preach to him, because as is said over and over and over again, I am the Lord, I have spoken, mm -hmm. and my word will come to be. So you do your part. And that's not just a preacher thing. Right. That's a people thing. Um, you know, like, where, yeah, where are you being placed is another way to, to look mm -hmm. at this, right? Um, you know, not what, not just what are the the bones in your in your life, but then, but then to hear God saying to you, preach to these bones, prophesy to these bones. What is it in your life? Because I think ultimately, I I have a firm belief that most of you um, know what God's good word for you is, right? And that's what that's what prophesying is. In the, in the midst of it, right, is, is knowing what the good word is. And, and so can, can you, you, be the prophet to your own bones in your life in, the, in this? You know, and there's just like so many things in this, in this text that are just really cool and subtle. Um, one of the things I learned today, which I um, <clears throat> didn't know prior to reading this, was um, God says this is the whole house of Israel. Mm -hmm. um, and that phrase is only used 12 times. Oh, that's interesting. Isn't that interesting? Because there's 12 tribes. And so I like hadn't known that before and I, I you know but some of the other things that are in here um you know the hand of god bringing ezekiel um it's used a hundred and ninety something times in the old testament and so um you know that's a consistent thing whereas there so there's like there's all kinds of like beautiful things that are hidden in this text that um are just i don't know really cool and i had to geek out and share that with you guys for a minute. <laughs> There's cool things in it. Well, you see, um, you know, it's just... But, I mean, seriously, read yeah. the book of Ezekiel because it's full of those cool things. Yeah. He uses uh, amazing language. He uses incredible imagery, and it's so vivid. Like, mm -hmm. sometimes when you're reading, like, Paul or Pseudo-Paul, like, you read a bunch of images, but at the end of it, you don't... You're not really seeing anything. You're in this weird, confusing maze of language. You always know exactly... What Ezekiel is describing, and you are occasionally mm -hmm. horrified by what Ezekiel like. Or for instance, doing. being in a valley full of dry bones, and then watching those bones slowly becoming again covered in flesh. There are horror and fantasy movies who have used that sort of imagery to great effect. Yeah. Uh, Ezekiel has no fear of using language that will shock uh, those around. Mm. Um, it also it, it brings an interesting thing to me. I think it has very interesting stewardship. Uh, overtones because um, it, it shows again like you said nothing's ever over nothing is ever truly dead nothing is ever truly gone mm. um, at no point is something too far gone even for God like when the question is mortal can these bones live the answer is always going to be yes there will always be more time there God always has the capacity to bring it back which going to the stewardship thing always reminds me we are not responsible for the future of the church, the future of the house of Israel. We're, we're, that's not our responsibility. So often we act like, well, we need to make sure that, no, we're, we're responsible for the prophecy. We're, supposed, we're responsible to act in the day and speak truth, to act, to follow out the commands that God gives us. You know, uh, that's our job. And if we make mistakes in that and, you know, end up adding some more bones to the valley, God can always bring them back. Hmm. Yeah, I guess I hadn't really, um, really thought about it as like a as a as a future focus kind of thing. You know, I I I think I stay closer to this text on a on a like a this is a happening now. Mm -hmm. But I guess I kind of see where you're at on that. Mm -hmm. Trying to like, trying 
trying to to make the connection. Well, I mean, I think because if you look at the message of the whole of the text as a whole, you know, what is the point of bringing life back to the dead bones? God can bring life back to dead bones. So there's really no place where we can have messed up too far. Because if life can come back to dry bones in a desert valley. Okay, I'm with you now. There is no point of no return. Yeah, I'm with you now. That's good, yeah. I mean, and that's true for <clears throat> for a lot of a lot of things in our in our lives you mm -hmm. know, and in our ministry and um you know it come, I, for me it comes back to hope mm -hmm. it's exactly just, it's, it's, it's a that the hope and that there's not an end or that, that death is not the end mm -hmm. um and on a literal level and and then on a, on a like a stewardship or a futuristic level like there's there's hope in what we do there's mm -hmm. hope in what we um we continue to work towards death doesn't have the final word that's kind of what this whole lent thing <laughs> christianity thing is about <laughs> so yeah any other thoughts or closing considerations to add mm -hmm. i don't think I do like over and over again the return to the refrain, and you will know I am the Lord. Mm. Um, and it's it's less about, hey, one second, what was your name again? And more about what being the Lord means. <laughs> like, I am the, can, can these bones live? The answer is, I am the Lord. <laughs> like, you're forgetting who you're talking to. Right. Like, the, the power of God, we, we often deal, you know, uh, one of my, favorite things a zealot is the person who who does what god would do if god understood the truth of the situation <laughs> and like so many people who feel like all right god's you know the way we treat some pastors is the sweet innocent naive one and we're going to do the hard work that really needs to be done and just ezekiel laughs in the face of that mindset is um because it's hopeful you could almost say horrifically hopeful yeah. <laughs> in some cases uh, he pulls no punches and just this reminder you will know i am the lord the lord I, we should totally take a clip from Pulp Fiction on that one and just have Samuel L. Jackson say it. Just to give the full of the, you will know mm -hmm. that I am the Lord. Yeah. Um, through these acts of power, through these acts of resurrection. And when you start to think, well, maybe this is the step too far. Maybe this is the thing we cannot reclaim. Mm -hmm. even, even after the bodies have been reconstituted, but they're not moving yet. Prophesy to the breath. And you will know that I am the Lord. Right. I mean, this is like good, good, straight up what it is to be Presbyterian, right? Sovereignty of God. Mm -hmm. Like God is God and we are not is what that means. The sovereignty of God. Um, God is God and we are not. And because of that, um, you know, God being God can do whatever God deems in, in this case. It's bringing bones back to life. And um, in other cases, it's, it's um, working on healing parts of the world. And, mm -hmm. um, it, you know, I mean, it, it just, it's, that's, that's like a, such a core part of who mm -hmm. we are as, as uh, reformed people. <laughs> but, um, you Holding know. Holding the church together in a time of social distancing. Right. You know, God, God is able to do that. God is able to do that, um, to, to hold us together and to keep us connected and, um, and through prayer and, and, and I just keep coming back to hope, you know, like prayer mm -hmm. and hope and, and prophecy, joy and prophecy and, and looking out at the world and saying like, it, it doesn't, doesn't have to be this. And just just because the world is this doesn't mean that this is exactly the way God mm -hmm. wants it. You know, I think um, I, I think it's a really dangerous time when people start making claims about um, this illness being um, mm -hmm. God's punishment or that this is God's will in some way. Um, you know, it's, it's like when someone gets sick with cancer and we just, uh, 
we just like want to give a bunch of God excuses. Um, and Going I, back to the blind man from last week. Right. Why is this? Was this man? Why is blind? this man blind? And um, and it it's not. I don't know that it that 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 part is God's will, but I believe that God can do good out of all things, mm-hmm. um, and including bringing bones back from its dryness and using the I'm going to use it again ruach. It's my favorite Hebrew word. Um, it means breath. It's the same word that's used here. That's used at the creation story mm-hmm. and with the with the Adam and Eve and and so like the it's often thought of in some some people interpret ruach as spirit um like in the trinity mm-hmm. not just um breath spirit hope those things so yeah i don't know i think it's a fascinating text it's you fascinating. you could read this text you could read the whole book of ezekiel over and over again and you're always going to find something new. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And so really, like, I think we just want you to go and look at this text. Seriously dig into this dig one. Dig into this. Um, it, uh, you know, you've got lots of time. Be ready to be shocked. <laughs> so, um, and I mean, mean, meaning that seriously, Ezekiel pulls no punches, but he's never boring. Yeah. We're good. I think so. All right. Well, thank you all. F- thank you, mortals, for joining us again. Yes, mortals. And the Lord has spoken. We shall see you all again soon. Blessings. God bless. Jesus loves me. This I know. For the Bible tells me so. Little ones do him belong. They are weak, but he is strong. Yes, Jesus loves me. Yes, Jesus loves me. Yes, Jesus loves me. The Bible tells.